Hi, thank you so much for joining CGT and live streaming. Hi, I am Sun Ye, and now I'm in Nansha Wetland. This is a wetland uh, just a few a, a few miles away from China's southern uh, southern China's Guangdong Province, the, its provincial capital Guangdong. And um, Nansha Wetland is known as a paradise for birds, and I'm sure you must have read it. This is a little bit about the wetland itself. It's seven square kilometers in size, and for the last 30 years, it's been building. Actually, it's a man-made uh, bird's paradise. It's been building itself to accommodate migratory birds for from around the world. And we are told that today, it's an ideal day to sight and to see the birds. Um, a little figures here. Um, since December, more than a hundred thousand migratory birds have arrived or stopped over in Nansha wetland, and we will see how many of them will we see today. And today we actually have a very special guest. We have to, uh, we have Dr. Zhang Xiao, who's a. a um, ornithologist with the local um, local institute. He knows a lot about the birds. He's the one who's going to guide us about what we're going to see and tell us a lot about birds, uh, migration, and preservation here in China. So let's say welcome to um, Dr. Zhang Xiang. Uh, he, he's going to uh, say hello to us first. Introduce hi. a little bit. Um, hi, hi, hi everyone. Hi. Song Ye. Hi. I'm Zhang Xiang from South China Indigenous Animal Institute. So I am very glad and happy to introduce some birding and the Lansha wetland to everyone. Hope you have a good trip to see a lot of bird, especially like uh, today's superstar black spooned spoobio, black faced oh, uh, spoobio. Yes, yeah. That's what we're trying to see up the uh, black-faced spoonbill. Yeah, yeah. We hope we'll see them today. A little bit about Nansha wetland. Uh, we, we, we're saying there are a hundred thousand migratory birds here okay. and it's certainly a heaven, a paradise for the birds. Uh, we're only going through a small stretch of it, but can you tell us a little bit first, what does, why is it such a good place? What makes a good place for um, a paradise for the birds? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, so, you know, Lansha wetland used to be a very flat tide, like a lot of uh, uh, river and the export for some rivers, especially. So, the government designed the habitat oh. during the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, how to design the uh, wetland park is a very important question. Uh -huh. So, uh, government uh, Design different uh, habitat, so I think uh, the functional, different function of, uh, uh, different function of uh, wetland park. How to design? So some place you need to design their functional to like uh, take a resting, uh -huh. uh, and some place you need to take a food. So where to find the food? Where to take a break? So they uh, so an ideal place for migratory birds to stop over. They have to have functional areas, yeah. and and today we're actually going through a stretch of the wetland that's known as the canteen, the eating place for the birds, right? Yeah, this place. Uh, just a minute, you will see a lot of bird in that area. Mm -hmm. So why why is that that area have a lot of bird? You, right now you can see a lot of bird in that oh, area. Right. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of birds too. Um, so we're going through the part of Nansha wetland that, well, this place is known as the canteen for the birds, where they try to find what kind of food are they looking for. I think uh, most are uh, fish, fish, uh, small animals. Yeah, small animals. animals. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. And is, do they have uh, dinner or lunch at the same time as we do? What? Well, it's three o'clock uh, Beijing time. What are they doing? What are the birds mostly doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. most of water birds, uh, wetland birds, yeah, they like to feed in. Feed in most uh, engage in the morning or in the afternoon. In the afternoon, uh, yeah, yeah. They might, if we see the birds, they might be looking for their food right now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this place is a very good place for feeding, mm -hmm. feeding for birds, yeah. And, and this is a very good day for uh, looking for and sighting these birds, right? Today that the sun is okay, uh, how, how do you decide that it's a good day to look for the kind of birds you want to look for? Yeah, 
Uh, it's a it's a funny story because you know uh, when we watching bird, the weather is very important. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, but uh, the what kind of weather is important? I think uh, so. Uh, not rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not uh, cloudy, mm -hmm. but uh, sunny is okay. It's proper. Mm -hmm. So uh, when weather is good, they are easy to find the find the food. So yeah. we're but. Weather-wise, we're really lucky today, so, wow. Um, you, can, you can see a lot of birds right yes, now. Yes, a lot of birds yeah. right now. I mean, uh, that's, that's lucky the, the, in the itself. The wow. The land one, you can stand there, it's uh, egret. Oh, that's the egret. egret yeah. One of the well, one of the biggest population of birds here, the egrets, right? But today we we were saying, it's the black-faced spoonbill that we are yeah. mostly looking for. And as we know, the black-faced spoonbill is called. Uh, it's so precious and so treasured that they are known as the panders uh, in birds. And if yeah. we want to find them, we usually we should be looking at their. Beak, right? They have yeah. a flat. Uh, they have a beak that's flat at the end of it. That's why they are called spoonbill. Spoonbill, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, first of all, uh, you have been watching and studying about uh, the black, black-faced spoonbill yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Um, tell us why are they so precious? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's a, it's interesting because uh, the number, the number of population never is. Right now, it's very small. How many? How many? Yeah, during the last uh, years, uh, international different countries to investigate mm -hmm. the bird sp uh, black faced spoonbill. Mm -hmm. The total number is uh, maybe three thousand nine hundred. Yeah. All over the world. All, all over the world. So first of all, you know the uh, whole population is very small. Mm. The, the second one, in Nansha areas, uh, during the last years, we record maybe. 39, 39 individuals. Mm -hmm. So, that's yeah, that's a very important win wintering site for this bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Any of them here? Uh, I needed to. I needed to find that. <laughs> Take some time. Wow. Yes. So again, we're going through a Nansha wetland, that it's one of the best known and most congregated areas for migratory birds that are traveling from north to south and settle for a little bit of time here in southern China's Guangdong. And today we are joined by Dr. Zhang Xiang, uh, who's been studying the birds, and he's going to tell us what kinds of birds we're going to see and what kind of bird, how bird preservation protection has been going on here. If you have any questions, you can post it down below uh, or on our various platforms. We'll try to get you the answer in this live streaming. Uh, we're trying to um, locate black-faced spoonbills here. That's the, the pender um, of the birds. Very, very precious. We're just told there are only less than four thousand of them globally for the uh, black face spoonbill. But uh, last year, we, we have seen some 39 of them here. And we actually, we actually were here yesterday, and we saw 20 of the black face spoonbills. Uh, the way you identify them is to see their, their beak. Um, and then Going back to the questions, uh, the black-faced spoonbills are very, very treasured. I was told it's because they are a little bit slow. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, because um, uh, I think I uh, so are they slow because they are so slow that we cannot that they cannot escape the threats? Yeah. Is that one reason why there's so <laughs> few of them? Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, so first of uh, all, it's uh, behavior. It's behavior it, uh, maybe impact. Mm -hmm. uh, why why impact their number? Why why uh, it's their behavior will impact their numbers? Because uh, they, you, you can see, their uh, feeding behavior used their special mm -hmm. bills. But their bill, uh, in during their evolutionary history, their bill uh, formed some like a spoon. Uh -huh. Spoon. So when they feeding, they needed to some 
uh, uh, wetland areas. So wetland areas, but this areas not uh, too much waters. Okay. Uh, okay. So they're very picky. Yeah, yeah. Not too much waters and also not too much uh, uh, land areas. Huh. So they feed in the just uh, very special areas uh, between the between the ocean and the, the land. So not very high and not very snow. So they're pretty sensitive to the kind of places they 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 can stay. So they yeah, yeah. they're picky picky uh, for their habitat and the food. Yes, yes, and. Uh, in my opinion, um, during the last uh, last 13 years, okay. in China, the wetland areas is disappeared very quickly. Oh. Uh, so I think this is the biggest uh, uh, factors 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 to influence their population. You you know, mm -hmm. uh, there is a name called mm -hmm. uh, China Great Wall. But oh. but it's different great war. It means uh, there are a lot of um, wetland disappeared, okay. and uh, uh, building a lot of artificial uh, buildings. So yeah. that's the kind of construction we don't want. Yeah, yeah. As the the birds, they they are very specific about the kind of places they want to leave. Uh, for example, for the black face boom bill, yeah, they yeah, yeah. they require a place that has a p perfect balance of land and water and they're picky about the food. Yeah. That's why they they only find select places. They yeah. only find very good places like here in Nansha to stay. Yes, yeah, you're right. Because uh, we know, uh, according to the last year's data, uh, uh, the population of this bird declined in Shenzhen areas, okay. but it increased in uh, Guangzhou, uh -huh. uh, why why Shenzhen dec declined and uh, Guangzhou increased? Lansha wetland have, uh, d according to our recording, the Lansha's number are increased during the last five years. Okay. So why they are increased? Because uh, uh, we also found maybe in Shenzhen areas they are more easily to be disturbed. Uh -huh. So those birds, if they are uh, feel not a very safe or not a very proper place to feed in or winter inside. They change their place. They change their roosting site. They change their uh, feeding site. So change that's to why here. Change to here. Yeah. So that's why we're seeing a growing number of black-faced spoonbills here. For one, this is a good place. It has yeah. the uh, perfect ratio combination of food, water, the land they need. The other thing is they are easily disturbed yeah. elsewhere. So if there's construction going on, too many tourists, yeah. um, they are going to be alerted and go to other places. That's why uh, as we're going by the Boat. We're a little distance away from the canteen for these uh, birds, the migratory birds that are st stopping over in China's Nansha wetland. We're not that close because we ha want to keep the distance and do not disturb them. But here we can hear they squeak a little, they twitter a little. It's, um, it's so cute. But coming back to uh, our talk with Dr. Zhang, the migratory birds, we know they all a lot of them come from the north to south every yeah. year. Do they always arrive at the same place at the same time? Yes, yes. yes. I think, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Oh. Because, you know, <laughs> bird is a very smart uh, animal. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. They are, they are, they are, uh, they are migrating time is very stable every year. Oh. But, uh, but even now, even now, even, even you know, uh, everyone knows the global climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, some people say the global climate change will influence the, influence the bird the migrate time. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think uh, uh, it depends on the what kind of bird, which bird. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at least uh, for black faced spoobia, it's very stable every year. It's very yeah. stable. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what are we seeing right now in front of us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the just a little bit on the endangered black-faced spoonbill. We actually saw more than 20 of them here in the Nansha wetland, but because they, they
they do not always stay at the same places. We are not sure if we're lucky enough to spot them today. But um, the number of the black faced bone bills here has been increasing year by year, mostly because this has a good combination of the food, water, land that they needed. Um, and then they are also migrating from elsewhere nearby that don't have um, such good condition. Uh, so the birds just flying across us, what are they? Avercoot. 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 Oh, those are the Avercoot. But we can turn to the other side. Well, the wetland is filled with water, filled with uh, all kinds of birds. Uh, egret, not an egret. Um, yeah. So egret has it's one of the biggest uh, population of birds here. The egrets, they are bigger. So you, you can see they choose different habitat. Like the egret, they like uh, uh, some forest area. Forest area. Yeah, 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 Black wow, that's yeah. the black, yeah, the yeah. black bills. Wow, yeah, I've never saw them fly. <laughs> wow, uh, but they are group group birds, right? They don't usually act alone. I just find one. Wow, <laughs> that's egret. Oh, cool, cool. That's egret. That's egret. Yeah. But we just saw one a black faced boom bill fly across us. Wow, that's that's a good sign. We're pretty lucky today. But you're saying that are they group? Group birds they usually act in, act in groups. The black face spoonbill they're mm. not usually alone, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they actually, they several several individuals grouped together. So we should be able to see <laughs> more of them here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you, I just mentioned this. So uh, uh, I, I want to. And the advocates, they need different. Yeah, I, I mean, I just want to uh, talk. Uh, uh, an important thing is because you can say di if uh, this wetland, this wetland, we need to design different habitat. Ah. So different habitat play different uh, functional role in their uh, feeding or resting of different. Uh, mm -hmm. They at least lead two kind of places: feeding, resting. Yeah, yeah. But they have different requirements. Yeah. Some like to rest in trees. Yeah, it's prefer to rest. Feeding, else. feeding here. Yeah. yeah. So that this area have a lot of uh, flower uh -huh. and the duck. Duck. Yeah. A lot of ducks here, right? And and we we are seeing um, black faced spoonbill. One of them, a lot of uh, egrets and a lot of avocats. We are seeing a lot of ducks Stinks. on stings. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but there is also. One kind of bird that special uh, we will not be seeing. We were just talking a little bit earlier. Uh, the yellow-breasted buntings. Do you okay. have a little bit story to tell us about that? <laughs> okay, thank you for asking this, this question. <laughs> it's also very interesting. Uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, yellow breast uh, yellow-breasted bunting is also very endangered in China, mm -hmm. especially during the last uh, maybe 10 years. Okay. Its population declined. Uh, Maybe became too endangered this days. More than I like, was like, told a, like a panda. Well, uh, the wild. other kind of birds that's so rare. But, but, uh, like but, uh, but uh, thirteen years ago, it's very common. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you play some uh, crow. I was told all the trees are filled with uh, the rice birds or yellow grass buntings. Yeah. Uh, ten years ago, ten, yeah. fifteen, twenty years ago. Yeah. But why are the rice birds the yellow breast the number of it is increasing so fast. Yeah, I think the first, uh, so first, the biggest question is uh, the human hunting. Uh. Yeah, human hunting. Yeah, we we, we human must uh, admit that because uh, uh, last uh, ten years, uh, according our uh, field investigation data, and uh, can buy some uh, a few uh, foreign bureaus government data, we found. Uh, most of the people, uh, because you, you know, uh, yellow breast bunting is also a migrate bird. Oh. They have long migrating routines. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a lot of uh, in Asia areas, a lot of people will 
hunting this bird. Uh, some places you uh, like to eat them. Yeah, so this is the uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, inf factor, I think, uh, to influence their population. The second one, I think uh, its habitat also uh, influenced because uh, some they need to crop, human crop. They like human crop areas. But you know, uh, in southern China, uh, especially along the uh, coast, uh, yeah, yeah, industrial things, and uh, some human crop disappeared. Yeah. So habitat is really important for uh, the migratory birds and birds. They need water, they eat trees, and they are not adjusting so well to modern industrialization. Yeah, I think uh, uh, people always think uh, uh, from humans' idea. But uh, I think, uh, I think uh, we need uh, to pay much attention uh, based on bird, bird thinking. What, what bird thinking? Because, uh, you know, birds, like, uh, the first thing is the, their habitat is most important. Because habitat provides the food. food. Food, yeah. Habitat provides where to the breeding, you know, breeding, yeah. Breeding, breeding site, yeah. Yeah, feeding site, yeah. Yeah. And, and then Sha Wetland is doing quite well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree that. <laughs> yeah. So again, we are traveling on a very stretch, uh, a small stretch of Nansha Wetland. This is known as the paradise of birds, and this is in southern China's Guangdong province. Um, since December, more than a hundred thousand migratory birds have been spotted uh, count or counted in this area, and. The sighted birds include endangered species like black-faced spoonbill that's uh, known as the pander in birds. It's very rare, only less than 4,000 of them accounted globally. And luckily, we just caught sight of one a while ago. Um, we are also seeing a lot of other birds yeah. peacefully feeding. What are they? Sting. Sting, I guess. Yeah, sting. yeah, yeah sting. So Paracruise. Mostly I seen and ever cool. and uh, in the far areas there are a lot of you know you can see some small ah. slug like uh, gray and black colors. Those are ducks, some ducks. Ah. Yeah. So today we're seeing a lot of avocates, egrets, and ducks all in the Nansha wet wetland area, and we are joined by Dr. Zhang Qiang, or Earth ornithologist who's been telling us about the kind of birds, their numbers, population, and their needs for migration, and the changes he has seen in the many years he's been researching it. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, migratory birds here in China. Uh, how do you see their, their traveling, their entire life going on here? Uh, excuse me? Uh, we we wonder, are the birds doing well? I mean, are more of them migrating here? And okay. what you do we that? need to do you to protect them? Or citizen, or human? Uh, all of the things. How are the changes you're seeing? You, you were telling me, um, yeah, let's start with uh, Guangdong. I, okay. I know you have a policy in mind, something yeah. you wanted to recommend to others. Uh, OK, I think at first, uh, I think uh, uh, Guangdong, Guangdong province uh, uh, did very well uh, some government policy to mm -hmm. how to protect the uh, bird. Mm -hmm. So they have uh, designed different uh, policies, uh, like uh, uh, for yeah, five years forbidden for birding. Uh, yeah, white birding, you don't, uh, you cannot hunting, you can't, you cannot hunting the bird. It's very strict, strict policy. And uh, I think, uh, uh, ex especially like uh, forest bureau, do a lot of work. The first they plant a lot of uh, forest, so the wide bird population are increased. This is important. The second one, I think, uh, the citizen citizen education, like uh, in school, they uh, teach uh, young guy, young people, young students to how to protect the bird. Mm -hmm. So the Guangdong, the Guangdong, Guangdong, yeah, yeah. So. Guangdong do very well in in like uh, uh, human uh, like like uh, students education mm -hmm. in this area they do very well. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, young people, more people, and young people to pay attention, pay much attention, pay much attention how to protect. It's a very important. I think. Uh, 
So in the other side of the wetland, we're seeing a lot of egrets, yeah. and we are also seeing an increasing number of migratory birds uh, that are taking uh, rest and yeah. have a staycation here yeah. in Nansha, mostly not only because of the natural uh, condition here, but also the government and individuals here are acting up to protect the birds, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. Uh, one of the most uh, recommended thing for other places to take on to. Uh, we are also seeing a group of uh, tourists going past us. A lot of, I know, a lot of photographers, aficionados for birds, they come here also trying to catch sight of China's, uh, one of the most precious birds, uh, black fix, uh, Blackface, Spoonbill, and other birds here in Nansha, but everyone tries to keep quiet and not to disturb the birds in their winter staycation. Uh, so at 3 o'clock, uh, what time is it for the birds? You mean the first time for birding? Uh, but is, do they also like, they like to take nap at uh, okay. 3 o'clock? Yeah. I think if you want to watch bird in the morning or in the morning time is uh, good. Uh, another thing is that you want to, if you want to watch in watch bird, mm -hmm. you must uh, pay attention to the tide time. Oh, the tide, tide time. time. Yeah, tide time. So when tide, in, it's different like a uh, night bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's different like forest bird. If forest bird, uh, mm -hmm. if we go to watching bird at the morning time, it's good. Mm -hmm. But as a watch bird, you need to pay attention. Uh, tied time, yeah, yeah. And we're soon landing on a stop, the destination, actually the destination of our live streaming. We're going to stop at one of the sighting platforms that will allow us to take a closer look at the canteen, at the canteen, uh, at the canteen of the, the birds. And again, we are in Nansha wetland. This is known as a paradise of birds where hundreds of thousands of migratory birds arrive here every day. And we just took a boating trip, a small one, with Dr. Zhang Xiang, who's, uh, who's been telling us what kind of birds we are seeing and how can we do more to protect them. And now we're at one of the biggest uh, the best place actually to see all the birds. Yeah, <laughs> let's see what, what can you see here. Our camera is going to also give you a glimpse from the best place to sight the birds. And we will let uh, Dr. Zhang Xiang tell us what he's seeing and what you're seeing here. Uh, a lot of you great. A lot of egrets. Yeah, Again, yeah. this yeah, is the not just the one, the not just the one. Yeah, right. This one, flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a egret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a egret. Okay, yeah. let's take a look. Yeah, the big one, the big one, uh, standing, standing uh, uh -huh. under the water. You uh -huh. can a lot of egrets. Yeah. A lot of egrets. Uh, Any other things? Any other um, things? We're, we're still trying to find a black face spoonbill. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> so the black face spoonbill, known as the pender of birds are what everyone wants to see here in Nansha. We just caught sight of one. They have, their beak has a flattened end and they mostly feed on small fish, shrimp. There are only fewer than 4,000 of year, uh, 4,000 of them globally. And in Nansha wetland, there are at least 30 of them stopping over this winter for their migratory routes. Yeah, I, I found one. Where is it? Yeah. Dr. John says, there is one, we will see one. It's a, it's, a, it's a little far. Okay. You, you can first see the line. 
Okay, so if you look really, really closely at the end of the forest end, Okay, we'll see if they are going to travel slowly to us. Um, Dr. John just told us that the black faced spoonbill are really peaky birds. They are very specific about the places, the food, the water and land. They're staying. Wow, three. Where are they? Where? So we're really, really lucky today. Um, all, all people coming to Nansha wants to find black face spoonbill. Uh, if you want to find the mm -hmm. black face spoonbill, mm -hmm. you must uh, pay attention to things. The first thing is uh, this bird always uh, flocking together with the other oh. egret. They're always flocking, flocking. with egrets. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, because. Uh, if you uh, if you can first find some egret, mm -hmm. you can find uh, some spoonbill flock ah. together with them. Uh, the second, it's a uh, its behavior is very interesting. You can uh, you can you can see they are uh, always uh, their head are slow are low, <laughs> and uh, they use their bill special bill uh -huh. like uh, called spoonbill like yeah. the, uh, the 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 they very similar like uh, uh, spoon. Yeah, yeah. They use their spoon to feeding, oh. feeding uh, under the water, mm -hmm. under the water. So that's why this is a good place. We also saw a lot of egrets here today, and Dr. John just told us that the very, very precious black-faced spoonbill always sight and work out. Oh, with the, with the egrets, and uh, you are seeing some of the most precious uh, black face spoon heels here in Nansha. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, what else about the, the, the birds, the black face spoon bill you wanted to tell us? Um, um, about uh, their temperaments, like? Uh, temper. Or their, what kind of things do they feed on? Okay. And you find them? Thank you so much. Okay, so but you we're seeing we're seeing blackface spoonbill okay. here. Wow, that's that's really really lucky for us. Congratulations! <laughs> Congratulations to us. <laughs> okay, so we'll stay stay uh, focus on these precious birds. We'll we'll see how. They are doing. They are now hiding their head inside their wings, right? They are feeding. They are feeding. feeding right yeah, now. Yeah, Whoa. Yeah, okay. Dr. John also told us they, the way they feed is pretty special, using their flattened beak. Okay. So we we know that the number of black face, uh, black face spoonbill is increasing, along with other birds, migratory birds here in Nansha, mm. but generally, um, how are you seeing the situation of bird protection here in China? Mm. I think the uh, mm, government uh, do a lot of work. Mm. Yeah, um, so some, some, some policy is very important. Mm. Mm. For example, during the last uh, uh, 10 years, we government uh, take a uh, national scale uh, bird monitoring program. Mm -hmm. It's very y useful because you can uh, investigate a different place mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, national scale. You can know how many birds in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, you can know which species mm -hmm. are increased, mm -hmm. which species are decreased. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, this is the most important thing government do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, in my opinion, we need a government, I think, uh, uh, to compile different, uh, mm -hmm. uh, different, uh, not a, not a police. Mm -hmm. I think also different uh, uh, department mm -hmm. can working together. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, even right now we have a lot of program, mm -hmm. but uh, different uh, department do different uh, program. Mm -hmm. 
So sometimes you can not to share enough information. Mm -hmm. You can you don't know uh, enough information, and uh, you so you don't know how to uh, make a very perfect mm -hmm. perfect uh, pro uh, policy mm -hmm. to protect the bird. So the first thing that I think uh, uh, government, the scientist, mm -hmm. and the uh, citizen mm -hmm. uh, together. working together. And yeah. that's what Guang Guangdong is uh, doing. And yeah. That's why Nansha has been such an attractive places for the birds, right? Yeah, yeah. We we also had uh, one uh, question from the audience for for you. Uh, so you've been studying this for a long time. What do you think is the most important thing that should be done? Is you were talking about international alignment? Is yeah. that the kind of thing you you think should be done to protect birds globally? Uh, you you mean globally or just Nansha areas? Global, yeah. Um, I think it depends on uh, what kind of bird. Mm -hmm. The first, uh, you need to know what kind of bird because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are maybe 10,000 bird, 10,000 species mm -hmm. uh, of bird in globally. Mm -hmm. But uh, some birds, their population are large. Mm -hmm. Some, 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 some species, their population is very low. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think um, the first uh, you need uh, to monitor. know the yeah monitor. I think uh, you need to monitor you because uh, you know in America and Europe uh, mm -hmm. every species uh, they have very detailed information, mm -hmm. but in China we we, we can't do we, we right now we still have enough data. Okay. So I think the first thing that we need to do more monitory work. Okay, so that's what you've been emphasizing. We have to do more monitoring to get exact number of them. Uh, so again, we go back to the black face spoonbill. Are they still there? Are they still feeding? Yeah. Black face spoonbill is a very endangered species of the birds. We actually know their exact number. They're only 3,900 globally. globally. Yeah. So that's why they're endangered. Yeah. So there are very, very few of this. And the, the, good, the good thing is that mm -hmm. the global number are increased. Slowly increased. increased yeah. They are still feeding. Yeah. OK. So that brings us to a very fruitful end of our live streaming, as we are really lucky at this end of the trip to be able to see the pender of the birds who are feeding peacefully, happily in southern China's Nansha wetland. This is the place where hundreds of thousands of birds come every year on their migratory routes, and the num number is increasing. Uh, Nansha wetland is a man-made from reclamation area that's been built with several functional areas to best feed the needs for the birds. And today, together with Dr. Zhang Xiang, we've traveled along a small stretch of the wetland where the birds eat, feed, and roam happily on the wetland. Um, we were going to, at the end of it, leave you with the with the birds, the black face spoonbill walking. And before we go, let's uh, say thank you to Dr. Zhang. Um, thank you. Do you have a one final message to all the bird watchers and bird, uh, bird lovers here? OK. Uh, so first, I'm very honored to have this chance to introduce black faced uh, spoonbill here. Mm -hmm. So very happy to see them today. Oh, yeah, yeah, very happy. And uh, I want to say, uh, Bird protection is a very important thing in China. I, I want uh, everyone, not only the scientists, I also want uh, some young uh, students, mm -hmm. and uh, every people loves bird, protect the bird. Mm -hmm. OK, have a good day. <laughs> That's okay. also our message to you. Look at the birds, see how lovely they are, and try to protect them um, on the days afterwards. So we're going to roam back to the place where we saw a few of Blackface Boom Bill at the end of it. Thank you so much for joining us. This is uh, CGT and Sun Ye. We are in southern China's Guangdong province, where more than 100,000 birds have been migrating to this wetland. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.